TNA blocker as of today is a $25 billion a year market. And I do not know of any drug that has a bigger market. And most of them are antibodies and uh, soluble receptors, they, which means they have to be injected. They are not orally bioavailable. So today I'm going to share with you some of the TNA blockers that are uh, anti-inflammatory and they are orally bioavailable. So having said that, and as of today, it turned out that no matter whether you talk about the survival of the tumor, you talk about the proliferation of the tumor, you talk about invasion of the tumor, you talk about the metastasis of the tumor. All the different uh, stages of the tumor, it turned out, is regulated by inflammation. So I hope to show you that what are the various genes or gene products that control various stages of cancer and how they are regulated by inflammation and then how to go about controlling inflammation. Another message that I want to communicate with you that whether uh, you talk about prevention or you talk about treatments, the targets are the same. There is absolutely no difference in the targets whatsoever. These are the same regular targets that each one of us have in our body. They have a normal function. When they become dysregulated, that they cause all the havoc. So you are going to see that all the genes that I'm going to talk about is a normal part of life. So here, just to uh, indicate that I have a no financial disclosure, uh, here just I think that it's very important to realize that if we look at the cancer and global cancer incidence, what you will find, there is a no country that has more cancer than America. It is paradoxical. If we know everything what cancer is all about, why America has the highest amount of cancer than anywhere else in the world? And same thing, by the way, goes for obesity. Same thing goes for uh, uh, Parkinson. Same thing goes for Alzheimer. And, and, and what I'm going to tell you, that the kind of lifestyle that we are leading is a very pro-inflammatory lifestyle. And that is part of the reason. And then, if you hear, for example, if you look at prostate cancer, and you see the U.S. is 124 per 100,000, and you see China, you see India, you see Bangladesh, the numbers are as clear cut. Okay? And then, what is amazing, that as I have moved from, uh, originally from India, to United States, and some of you may have migrated to. Here is a study that has been done with the uh, women from Japan. And what they found that if a woman moves from Japan to United States, the incidence of cancer is uh, a, a lowest if she remains in Japan. And what I have here in different colors is that first generation, second generation, and third generation. By third generation, she catches up enough that now the cancer is just like any other American. Indicating that it is not about the genes, it is about the lifestyle. And to make things worse, that cancer, it is anticipated, is going to double with the next 20 years. So you can see that new cases of cancer, 10 million uh, new cases and 7 million deaths in 2002. And 2030, there are 20 million new cases and 14 million deaths. It's going to double. And fortunately, that doubling is not going to come from United States. It is going to primarily come from countries like India and China, where there are 2.5 billion people. And they are all trying to be very Americanized. They are all trying to be lead the American lifestyle. And therefore, the cancer is very much on the increase in all those countries. So this is the working hypothesis that dysregulated chronic inflammation caused by lifestyle factors mediate chronic diseases, including cancer. 
So here is, a, if any of you are interested, there is a whole issue of science devoted to inflammation. This is January 11, 2013 issue. And as you can see, that several age-related chronic diseases, such as metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, they all have inflammatory component. So we have even done a whole book called Inflammation, Lifestyle, and Chronic Diseases. If anybody is interested, can look it up. And here is a whole issue of immunity. And the special feature is cytokines and inflammation. This is one of the very, very prestigious journal in the immunology area with a very, very high impact. And there you can see that the whole cover is about fires. The word inflammation is in flame. And that's what you see here on the cover. And, and so, as I mentioned, that we happen to discover a molecule called the TNF, which is, uh, we discovered it as an anti-cancer agent. As of today, it is one of the major mediator of inflammation. So we have done a review here, signaling pathways of the TNF superfamily, a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword, what I mean, that, that uh, one half of the activities that TNF exhibits, that's good for you. The other half of the activities that TNF exhibits, that's bad for you. So life in itself is a double-edged sword. Depending upon how you use it and in what context you use it, you can do a good to somebody, you can do bad to somebody. And TNF is no different. Another review that we did, historical perspectives on the TNF and its super family, 25 years later, a golden journey. And when I say golden journey, it has a double meaning that it is not just 25 years, it also means a gold. Gold means curcumin or turmeric, that's a golden color. And one of the way to control TNF is, uh, is curcumin, and I'm going to look, uh, talk about that. 